Well, welcome back to GIS analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to analyze overlapping polygons. So we'll start by using the Create Fishnet tool to create some overlapping polygons. So our first polygon we'll call square one, and I put it in a test geo database, and that will be at an origin of zero, zero. And the y-axis will go straight north, so zero, one. And then the cell width, let's make it 10 wide and 10 high. And then the number of rows is one, number of columns is one, and then we don't need label points, we want to create a polygon. So then we could recall our create fish net using the geoprocessing results. And we'll, let's call this square two. And we'll shift it to the right five units. So our X changes from zero to five and then just OK. So now we've got our square one overlapping with square two. And then we'll do it a second, a third time. So we'll call this square three. And let's shift this up five units. It has to be greater than five. Because it's the y-axis coordinate going straight north. It has to be greater than the origin. So then if we look at our squares, here's square one. Here's square two, and there's square three. So our squares represent polygons, and in real life we might have, for example, wildfires. And we want to know, is there an area that burned in Alaska three times in the last 30 years? So each layer might represent all the area that burned each decade. So where are the areas that repeat burn three times in the last 30 years? Or our polygons might represent animal home ranges, and we want to know where is the area where this might be day one, day two, day three. Is there an area where the animal home range overlapped for all three days? So we're going to use the intersect tool to ask a question about overlap. But before we do that, let's add a field and let's call it code, you call it whatever you want, and then we'll calculate code to be the unique value for each polygon. So for square one, I'll calculate it to be one, and then we'll repeat the process for square two and square three. So I added a field for square two, and I calculated code two to be two, and the same thing with square three, I calculated the field to be a value of three. So we'll use the intersect tool with our three polygon layers, and you can input them in any order you want. And then I usually say, I don't really need the feature IDs. I just want the attributes that are more meaningful. So let's go no feature ID, and then we'll output it to our test geo database, and we'll call it overlap and then just okay. And to make this even clearer, I'll change my outline color for each of my input layers and make them a thickness of two. So here are our input layers, and then the output is our overlap polygon. And then if we look at the attributes, we would have all the information from our first polygon, all the information from our second polygon, and all the information from our third polygon. So for example, if the polygons were the dates of wildfires, we would have all the dates when that burn occurred. So this area may have occurred, burn in 1976, and then reburn in 1983, and then reburn in 1997, et cetera. And then we also ha always have the perimeter of the area of overlap and the total area of overlap. Okay, so Intersect is an ideal tool for asking questions about overlapping among different layers. But what if you have one layer of polygons and some of those polygons overlap? 
So let's create a layer from these three using the merge tool. So we'll have just one layer of polygons and some of them overlap. So we can use the merge tool and we'll merge these three layers into one output polygon feature class. And then just OK. So here's the output and the first polygon was originally polygon number three. The second polygon was originally polygon number one. And the third polygon was originally polygon number two. So then we'll re remove our input polygons. So we want to know information about polygons that overlap within this layer. So there's a tool that will allow us to do that within a layer. And that tool is a geoprocessing tool, Polygon Neighbors. So it analyzes all the polygons within one layer and it will create a table. So we'll put that table in our test geo database. And if we wanted, we could report by grouping. So this report by fields would be the fields used to identify unique polygon groups. We won't do that in this example. What we will do is say include area of overlaps and then include both sides of neighbors and then just OK. So that will report to a table. So in our in our table, we have the source object ID, which is what polygon we're talking about, and then the neighbor object ID, who's the neighbor we're talking about. So in this example, we're talking about polygon number one and its neighbor, which is polygon number two. And then we have what is the area of overlap, and then is there a line that is adjacent between those two polygons. So in this case, there is no line that's adjacent between the two polygons, it's symbolized by object ID, and we could see that a little better. So in our original polygon layer, so in our layer properties for our original polygons, we'll label by object ID bold 14. So now if we look at our tables, there is no line between this polygon and polygon number two that is adjacent. So let's look, are there lines that are adjacent between two polygons? So if we sort descending, there are new, new lines that are adjacent between any polygon. So that's why this length is always zero and the node count would be zero. So we have overlapping polygons and no polygons that border each other. In the next video session, we'll talk about how to locate adjacent polygon borders between layers and within a layer.